Should a wholesale Amazon seller do advertising PPC? It's not really something we think about in the wholesale world, but today I talk with Bernard, who is a PPC Amazon expert, and we lay out a perfect plan for wholesale sellers to make more money using Amazon advertising. Stay tuned. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast, where we talk about Amazon wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, or anything in between. And now, your host, Todd Welch. What's up, everybody? Todd Welch here from the Entrepreneur Adventure, and welcome to episode 30 of the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast. Today, I sit down with Bernard, who is an Amazon advertising expert. Now, when we think about advertising on Amazon, usually we think about Amazon private label products, and that's where a majority of the advertising spend happens. But there's a lot of things that you and I as wholesale sellers can do in the Amazon world to advertise and get a lot more sales for our products. So we really dive into this like in depth today, like step by step. So if you're not familiar with Amazon advertising, you're gonna get a lot of benefit out of this, but some of it may go over the top of your head. So you're gonna wanna to listen to this maybe two or three times and continue researching and learning more about advertising to really understand this stuff. But we also break it down for even the basic beginners. So you can get started with an advertising campaign that is probably gonna have immediate results for you and start making you money right away. So you're really gonna to wanna to pay attention to this. The show notes and the links for this episode, because Bernard actually has a free ebook that you're going to want to pick up as well. And the links for that are going to be in the show notes at entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 30. But highly recommend you listening to this complete and maybe even listen it two or three times. I am going to have to listen to this again because even though I'm familiar with advertising from my private label products and doing some with wholesale, I picked up a lot of really great tips on this. I think this is going to be one of our top episodes out there. So definitely stay tuned and check this out. Again, entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 30 for the show notes and all the links. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this episode with Bernard. All right, what's going on, everybody? Today, I have a PPC Amazon advertising expert. His name is Bernard Nader. He's got a bachelor's degree in computer science from Florida International University, which is pretty cool. I have a background in computer science as well. Um, then he's also got a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Miami. And started selling on Amazon in 2016 and learned a ton about advertising, helping other people, doing it for his own products and things like that, which has led him into the world of helping other people with PPC. So I wanted to bring him on today because in wholesale, we don't necessarily think about PPC and advertising on Amazon a whole lot, but there's a whole world of things that we can actually do to build our sales, get more sales by doing some advertising. So Bernard, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Why don't you share a little bit more about your background and how you got into the advertising world? Sure, thanks for having me, Todd. I appreciate it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's my honor. So uh, my background, like you said, is engineering and computer science. I started on Amazon in 2016 when I launched my first product. I took uh, private label courses and all that, but none of them had anything about PPC back then. So I had to learn this the hard way. I, I think I launched the right product. Everything was perfect, but I couldn't get anything ranking on there. So I'm like, man, there's got to be a way to uh, figure this thing out. So I, I did a lot of investigation. I did a lot of research. And it turns out that if you can rank on page one, position one to five for a lot of keywords, then you do really well on Amazon. So that's what I've been working on in the past three to four years, like perfecting. And I think I have some really good tips for you guys today. So All right, perfect. Looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do a little bit of PPC myself. I started in private label 
you know, just like you did and did also retail arbitrage. I actually started retail arbitrage, I guess, led me to private label and now to wholesale. So I definitely know a little bit about the advertising world from private label and do a little bit in wholesale. So really looking forward to kind of diving into your ideas because, you know, I do a little bit of stuff that I've like heard here and there, but I am definitely not an advertising expert. So why don't we go ahead and just, you know, dive right into that world. Should someone selling wholesale, selling other people's products, our margins are, you know, if you're doing really good, maybe around 24 to 30%, possibly down to even 15 to 20%. So is it even worth us doing any advertising? My answer is Yes. Okay. So I, I, I have a broken down system for you guys, like a quick three-step process where if you're doing over 20% of margin, you want to try one strategy. If you're doing under that, you want to try another strategy. So I want to go into each one of them separately and tell you like a little bit of the differences between them. And if you have any questions, meanwhile, just feel free to ask. Well, whatever comes to mind there, Todd, you just okay. ask. Yeah, so, yeah sure. so where do we start? We start basically by number one is break even a cost. This is so basic, but so many sellers miss on this. They don't understand that if you don't get a clear idea on what your profit margin are, you cannot make, understand if you're actually making or losing money on Amazon. So step number one would be figuring out your break even a cost. Now, a lot of sellers do this manually, which I think is a mistake because there's so, so much going on on Amazon that I, I wouldn't want to pull up reports and reports and returns and reimbursements and all that stuff. I like using a software. What I would recommend is Fetcher. Now, Very simple. Before we go any further, for people who aren't familiar with ACOS and TCOS and stuff, oh, okay. like that, can you explain exactly what that is? Right. So ACOS is advertising cost of a sale. So basically, how much money does it cost you to get a sale on Amazon? So if you're selling a product for... $20 and it, it, the, the, it, it's costing you five, then the, the, the ratio of that would be your A cost in percentage, right? Simple as that. So like I was saying, figuring out that number is like essential to your success on, on campaigns. So once you figure that out, let's suppose like you said, a good number would be like 25% or so, you said, right? Roughly for- A cost? Break even. I guess your break-even profit or a cost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would probably be around break-even, 20, 25%. Okay, so let's take it's 20% is your break-even. So you cannot afford to spend more than that to make actual money. So what you're going to have to determine now is what I call the target a cost. So you got to have in mind a number, of course, below that so it could be profitable or depending on your what your your campaign goal initially would have to be break even in my opinion because you can't expect right off the bat to be making kind of big money on this you got to pay for the data and let the data tell you what direction to go right so initially i would have like definitely auto campaigns you would have like uh, let's say your, your break even is 20 you're you're aiming for 15 for example right so if your A cost is 15, you're profiting 5%, right? Mm -hmm. All that makes any sense so far? Yep. Okay, so the strategy I would recommend for if you're doing above 20% margin is two types of auto campaigns. So you would have one of them, you would have what they call a catch all, meaning if you have like 30 or 50 different products, throw all of them in there in one campaign. So what that does is it pulls data, the platform looks for keywords that you could be ranking for that could, could be potentially relevant to whatever you're selling, right? So it pulls all that stuff in, it shows your, your ad, and it's going to gather data that you could use later on to figure out what's working or what's not, right? So okay. this is one. I have a, a question there because I was actually um, talking about this on one of my Facebook groups and someone mentioned, because I have about 300 products that I am carrying. Um, he was saying, you know, I don't know if it's a good idea to put them all in one because it's going to be hard for Amazon to figure out what to display when and for what keywords and stuff like that. 
Uh, do you think that's true or is Amazon system smart enough to know that products are all different and target individually for each individual product? Okay, I would say I agree, yes, it is true. But in your guy's case where you don't have control of the listing itself, you cannot change anything. So you don't have control of what keywords you're gonna rank for, you don't. As private sellers, you do, you could change all that stuff, the back end and all that. Yeah. But as a wholesaler, you can't do anything about it. So you don't have a choice there, really. Yeah, there's some things that we can change. I do change quite a few different listings. Um, it all depends. If it's br not brand registered, right. we usually change stuff. Uh, sometimes you have to get the help of Seller Central and stuff like that. But yeah, I definitely know what you're saying. Yeah, so it, it is. It makes sense, yes. But on the other side, you don't know really until you try it, pretty much. It's just you. you but the idea behind this is it's an extremely low bid campaign, right? It's like 15 to $20 a day, but the bid is extremely, it's definitely lower than any other campaign you're gonna be bidding on, right? So let's, let's assume your cost per click on anything else is like 20 cents. This one would be like 10, 10 cents. Okay. So it's like extremely low. So it's not gonna cost you much to get that data, but that's, that's a campaign that you'll be letting run for a long time because it's going to take a, some time, but it's going to give you like really, really cheap, uh, really cheap clicks and, and sales, right? So that's the idea behind this. So, and then you also have the ability to shut down whatever product is not working, of course, right? But the idea is to initially start with all of them into one campaign. Okay. So start out with like a bid or, or a budget, uh, say $20. A day. I would say, yeah, I would say, depending on your margin, if your margin is extremely tight, like 20% or 20 to 25, I would say a minimum you go, you want to go in is, is 10. Because anything below that doesn't really make sense. So I like seeing $20 a day, right? But extremely, extremely low bids though, remember. So it, it's not, you're not necessarily going to hit that, that budget, right? With the bid that low, depending on how much traffic, you have 300 products. So that, that, could, that could add up. So you got to be careful with that and, and make sure you check on it every couple of days. Make sure that you're not showing up for stuff that are not relevant, right? As soon as you make sure of that, then it should be fine, you know? Um, okay. I yeah, would, so I was thinking, you know, do like a bid of like $100 a day. Does, it, does that, or not a bid, a uh, budget, budget? Does that budget affect anything? I mean, I'm... I'm not going to probably reach that $100 per day, but I'd like to have it that, you know, if I have an A cost of 5%, then spend as much money as you possibly can, right? No, for sure. That makes sense. But initially, you don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, definitely. If it's working, then increase the budget. Okay. Absolutely. I would not mess with the bid. I would increase the budget, right? If, if it is working, you're getting like a 5% A cost or somewhere there, way, way lower than your target, then yeah, for sure. Give it some budget. Okay. If it's working, give it budget. Yeah. Don't, don't necessarily mess with the bidding though. Right. Would it, would it make sense to have multiple campaigns? So let's say I add all my products to one with a 10 cent bid, $20 budget. And then I make another one, add all of my products and do like a 20 cent bid. And then maybe another one with a 5% bid. Does that make sense? Or is that kind yeah, of, yeah. This, that's a different strategy that a lot of, I guess, people try. Like a, it's called a tiered auto campaign strategy. You could try that. Yes. The idea behind this is you want to make sure you hit the budget if you do it that way. Right. If you don't hit the budget, it doesn't really make sense because you're going to be competing against each other. The idea behind a tiered campaign like this would be one, one, once one runs out of budget, the other one takes over. And then you will show up in different locations, right? You know how the ads, where they show up, right? It could be top of search. It could be rest of search, product page, stuff like that. So there you're just playing with placement with the auto campaign ads, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense that they'd be competing with themselves because they're going for the same base. So, right? so right. it could work out though that maybe like the twenty cent bid gets like mid page and the ten mm -hmm. cent bid gets bottom of the page and the I think it's like the second or third page. Yes. I don't know yes. if that would make any have any benefit, but kind of yeah, that's the idea. But I, I want to see it hit that budget though. If I want to make sure that I I I'm testing it correctly, I want to see like. You're hitting the budget on one and then the other one picks up 
and then you know and so okay. forth i wouldn't i wouldn't want to have more than three of those i mean to me two is okay i mean you have a two-tiered uh auto campaign where one is 20 percent above the other one in terms of bidding okay and that should take care of it yeah that's okay. there's a lot of different ways to try this right this is okay. another method sure but like you said, if your if your margins are tight, you don't have the budget for this, then don't do it, right? But if you want to try it, sure, it's worth trying out. Again, this is all testing. You know, you could say, oh, this works for this guy, it doesn't work for me. No, I mean, it doesn't not the same strategy will work for all sellers, right? You got to try different things until you until you figure out what works for your business. All right, perfect. So we've got the twenty cent auto campaign with all of our products in like a twenty thirty dollar budget, whatever you're comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even ten or whatever. The higher, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, right. You so more data. Right. So you know, like I said, you know, you want to make sure that you know you're not exceeding your your budget by too much. So if you're comfortable with 10 to 20, that's fine. Start there, right? Um, and then you want to, like I said, make sure that you're checking, you're testing, the, you're looking at the search term results, right? The, 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 you're making sure that you're not showing up for stuff that you're not relevant at all for. Mm -hmm. And if you do see these, you got to determine, you know, I don't know if you want me to go into the exact phrase, uh, phrase the exact thing and uh, the negatives you want to learn. Uh, you want me to like elaborate on that a little bit or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, people are going to be in a wide variety of different experiences who are listening. Right. So, so initially, they right. Ahead, they can still learn and catch up. So Yeah, I could touch up on, on it a little bit. So you want to be careful with negative uh, phrase and exact same things too early because let's assume you're selling something that, that has a, a singular and a pro, right? Sometimes I've seen that the singular search term converts and you would have the plural not converting. But what happens is if you're negative exacted, the algorithm would take out both of them. Yeah, negative exacting something, you're making sure that it's not something that could be potentially have a plural or singular that's converting. So you wanna be careful with that. Interesting, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, right. So the, the methodology, I guess the strategy behind this would be you would test them separately, right? You would have a singular version of it in a separate campaign and you would have a plural version of it in the same campaign. So hopefully the, hopefully the algorithm would sell, send the impressions under the appropriate keyword, right? Okay. So yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind when you when you negative exacting stuff. So make sure that you understand the differences or what is, you look at the, the whole data, not just a singer, a singular search term. Yeah, and negative um, exacting basically means just taking a keyword that Amazon is displaying us for in saying, don't display us for that anymore. If someone right. searches for that exact phrase. Right. So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm selling the, like a, a, an eraser, right? That's like a, a one, uh, let's say a pink eraser, for example, right? Uh, if you negative exact that, so you would, you would take out pink eraser and pink erasers as well. Okay. Right? So if eraser is converting, but erasers is not, you lose both, <laughs> right? Okay. So keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And then, right. So you want to make sure once you do create that list, you, you save it somewhere. Let's, let's say you're selling something that, you know, it's only for the pets, for cats, for example, right? And it's also showing up for dogs. You don't want that. So you, you could negative phrase dog, for example. So anything that has to do with dog would not show up in any campaign that you create in the future. So you will create a list of those and then make sure that future campaigns have them already in there as negatives. Yes, because the phrase, as opposed to the exact, where the exact has to be exactly what you entered, the phrase is any phrase containing that word, right? Or multiple. Yeah, let me be more, uh, a little bit more specific. So phrase, let's take phrase for example. Phrase is, Let's say pink eraser. A phrase match for pink eraser would be girls pink eraser. That would be a phrase match. You could add a, a keyword at the beginning and at the end of it, but nothing in between mm -hmm. except for a four. So it could be like pink four girls, for example, would show up as in there as well. The algorithm doesn't take into account where of, for, these kind of uh, 
I guess, additions to it. The phrase itself stays the same, but you could add at the beginning and you could add at the end. Anything goes at the end, anything at the, at the beginning. So that's the phrase, right? The yeah. exact is pretty much exact, unless you have singular and plurals, right? So pink eraser, pink erasers would be also an exact. Okay. And then broad would be like pink eraser and then pink anything in between, anything at the end. And then you could flip the order as well, where the phrase and exact, the order stays the same. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's too bad that Amazon does that with the plural and not plural, because I know that they say that, you know, the search results are supposed to be the same, but if you actually test it, they're different. So yeah, I, it also depends on the, the product as well, whatever you're selling, it, it's all relative to what you're selling. So it could not be the case in your stuff, but I've seen it a lot in what I, what I, the, the brands I represent, I've seen it a lot. So it is something to keep in mind. Yeah. Now, where are we getting this data that will tell us if we should make a negative exact or a negative phrase or something like that? So those are called search term reports in uh, Seller Central. So you, you go under re advertising reports, I believe. You got to download all that stuff. So you would have it in an Excel spreadsheet of it. I mean, you, you got to have some filter set up. It is a kind of a, a process that I, I have automation for this. I mean, I could share with your audience if you need that. But yeah, absolutely. Do you have your own software or do you use someone else's software? I'm using my own right now. I, it's not something, I, it's, it's in-house. It's something I'm not selling right now. It's okay. not, you know, it's just to filter out like keywords and stuff. That's all I use it for. Like basically when I download a report, it automatically sets it in a, in a format that I, I like pretty much. And everybody has their own preferences. I like seeing the data in a certain way, yeah. right? Impressions, clicks, sales, ACOS, stuff like that. So every time you download the report, you just click a couple of, of shortcut key, uh, keyboard or uh, shortcuts, and then it just formats it for you, right? So okay. you don't need anything additional. It's, it's basically an Excel macro. That's all it is. You know, you've been programming, so you know what that is. Okay. That's all it is. So if someone works with you to set up their PPC, that's what you're using to make the decisions and stuff for them? I use a lot more tools than that though. I, I lose, yes, I use that initially to audit the, the, uh, the campaigns, their account. Yeah, I use that. And then if I do start working with them, I do use other software for automation, like controlling ACOS, keyword research. I use Helium 10, I use uh, Ignite. I use uh, uh, quite a few different software for different purposes. Okay. Yeah. I, I use Ignite myself. Yeah. I use Ignite as well. I like they Ignite. They make a nice report and they have suggestions and stuff. I don't know yeah. how, how awesome those suggestions are, but it gives you an idea on the data. Yeah. You can look at it yourself. Download. I'll tell you for like keyword research and stuff. I like Helium 10. I like uh, Helium 10 for that, but I like Ignite for, I guess, if you want to, um, like set up some rules for the, the A cost. Uh, I mean, some, some rules you could set up there that, that like, but for keyword suggestions, I like doing this manually. I like looking for it myself. Cause okay. it's so depending, it's so dependent on the market and then the competition and stuff like that. So I don't want to, I don't want to rely on the software for that. I do look at the data, but not go by it blindly. Right. So mm -hmm. I, that's the way I look at it. Okay. Well, let's, let's keep going down the auto campaign. So we have the auto campaign set up. It's getting data. Uh, we can download those reports from seller central or use software like ignite to look at the information. So what would be the next step after we're looking at the information? Okay. So I talked about the catch all. So you would have one of them, right? The, 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 the strategy of, if you have at least 20% of margin, you would do, one catch-all campaign, all your ASINs into one. And the second one, we, we would have one campaign with each product in its own ad group. And you would give that a, a budget as well between 15 to $20 a day. But the bid on that one is slightly higher, definitely higher than the catch-all campaign. So if you're bidding 15 cents on the catch-all, this one would be like 20, 25 cents. And then again, you got to make sure you check the data often to make sure you're not showing up for stuff that are, that are not relevant, costing you money for no reason, right? You want to make sure you're, you're analyzing the data. Two to, I recommend initially between two to five days, right? Give it enough time for enough impressions. Okay. So, 
So that's, so we have a camp, an, another campaign that we set up and then ad groups underneath there for every individual product or like product groups or how would we organize that? I like doing it at, at per product. Um, so if you have a, a, a variation, for example, I would have one campaign and each variation would have its own ad group, right? And if you have a standalone, then it would have its own campaign. Except I want to see the data separate. Okay, so separate, 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 separate campaign for, uh, for if, item? Yes. If you have, like I said, if you have a standalone product, for sure, different campaigns, separate campaigns. Okay, because the, the, the level goes, you make a campaign, and then under that you have the ad groups, and then yeah. under the ad group you have the actual right. product. Ads, right? Yes. So, yes. I, okay. I, I like separating the data. I mean, it's so basically I would have 300 campaigns then. So you have 300 totally different standalone listings. Is that what you uh, have? No, not necessarily. Some of them are variations. So right. let's say Variation. 150 different campaigns. Yeah. So, yeah. so I variations would, would be under the same. I would start out as the same. Yes. For variations. Yeah. I want to keep them under, but separate, you still have separate data, but organized in the same campaign, right? So ad groups would separate the color variations, size variations, and stuff like that. Okay, very yeah. good. But definitely separate campaigns for separate products, absolutely. Okay, yeah. and so what is the benefit of that over the big auto campaign with everything in it? Well, this is like more specific, right? This one is more like targeting specific keywords that you're your, you might be ranking for, or you might be showing up and getting sales for. The other one is just like, let's see what happens pretty much. Let's see what Amazon pulls from all that information, right? And this one is more like specific. Think of it as, you know, you know how you have the match types, broad, phrase, and exact? Same idea here. Let's, you, you would think of the catch all as the broad and the, the other one as a phrase match. So that's the idea. Okay. It's just more targeted campaigns. So these ones are not auto campaigns. Then. No, they are. They are auto still. No, auto campaigns, both, both types, what I'm talking about. The first one, catch all, auto campaign. And then one auto campaign per product. Oh, we're still on auto campaigns here. Okay. okay. We're still on auto campaigns, yeah. All right, good. Yeah, auto campaigns. That's all we're talking about right now. Yeah, initially. Because, you know, having like, uh, you know, your profit margin so a little, I guess, tight, I guess. You don't want to go too much. So I, I would want to see proof before I start investing in like broad uh, phrase and exact. For sure, exact, I would, I would be careful with exact at this point. So okay. initially- you know, we're doing this all at the same time or are we waiting till we get data from the big auto campaign first? So first, like I said, you have the two auto campaigns running. So give it, I would say, I would say a couple of weeks to get enough data. And then you, you will be analyzing the data and then creating manual campaigns depending on what's working on those auto campaigns, right? So that's the next step. You will go on broad now, right? So you go from the two autos. Actually, the cat troll, you don't even have to worry about it. Just filter, just remove whatever, whatever is not working, but don't even worry about what's converting or not because it's, it's, it's all over the place, right? So you want to concentrate your keyword research on the one campaign per product one, right? Okay. So, but I, I, again, I want to emphasize that you got to check on them often and then removing stuff that, that, that are costing you money, right? And not working, right? Yeah. And, and from there you could have like, you know, you start understanding your keyword. It's, it's a matter of like learning your products pretty much, right? You could you start understanding what keywords are working. And now from there, you would, you would branch out and create broad campaigns with, let's say, some, uh, let's say one of them is converting for you decently well, right? Uh, you're getting five or six sales from it, and then your ACOS is pretty close to your target ACOS, then you would break it up and create a broad campaign based on those criteria. Okay, so with the broad campaign, there we're targeting like a specific keyword or sets of keywords? Yeah. Okay. So now let's assume you have a report, right? The report shows you have, you're going to have like thousands of search terms, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, before I get into that, making sure you understand what the differences are between keywords and search terms. Yeah. Right? So keywords is like a seed where th that's the, the word that you're bidding on. 
The search term is what the customer is actually typing, right? So the reports would give you the search terms. So you're going to know exactly what the customers are typing. Yeah. But once you have that information, you turn these search terms into seed words, or in other words, keywords. So now you're bidding on them and see what else comes from that. It's like building a tree, you're starting with the trunk, right? And then you have the branches and then the leaves and all that. So that's the idea behind this. Yeah, so if we stick with the eraser, then like eraser would be the right. And so, purple girls eraser for school could be exactly. a search term. term. So once you know, let's say, let's say you started out with pink eraser and your, your auto campaign gave you pink eraser and you're seeing that sales from that, right? So you would take that and then you would throw it into a broad campaign. What that's going to do is going to convert this into a seed keyword. So this one is going to have more potentially different search terms that people are typing on. So it could be pink eraser for teenage girls or pink eraser for moms. I don't know, something like that, right? Or something of that nature. So yep. basically you're taking one and you're basically looking for like a deeper level of whatever more accurate uh, I guess, understanding of what the customer is searching for. So that's the idea behind the broad. And then one step further would be like the phrase. And then, like I said, I, I would, I would, if I were you guys, I would stay away from exact because they are more expensive in general. And if you are very sure that the keyword is really converting, then you can try exact. But initially I would stay with broad and phrase. Okay. I would concentrate on phrase a lot. <laughs> so that's, that's interesting because that yeah. kind of goes uh against what i've actually been doing uh -huh. um just my own learning and stuff so uh -huh. it, even like with ignite the software it typically goes from the auto campaign right to exact um there's no broad i mean they do broad phrase exact most of the recommendations are right to exact but you would recommend that if i see a uh keyword that's converting really well to move it then into a broad campaign and then maybe to a phrase and possibly at some point to an exact once I'm 100% sure right. it's actually converting. So, yeah. Okay, let, let me give you the logic behind this. So, if you think of the definitions of, of broad, exact, and phrase, think of it as, so, let me see how can I explain this. So, let's say this would be broad, right? Mm -hmm. So, this would include everything in phrase and everything in exact. So broad is basically like the, the, the umbrella, right? So if you know that something is in broad, you don't want to go directly into phrase. You want to get the one step closest to make sure that you're not basically wasting your money here, right? Okay. So you want to go from broad, you go phrase. And in my experience, I tell you from the many accounts I've managed, phrase work better overall for the type of products I represent, they work better. Um, I've tested, like, like I said, I cannot tell you that it's going to be the same for every seller, but from what I've seen, phrases are better. So okay. usually exacts are more expensive for sure. I don't know if the algorithm automatically, the CPC is a little bit higher automatically because it's exact. I'm not sure how, they, how that works. I'm not sure anyone knows except Amazon, but from my experience, that's what I've seen. So I would s stick with phrase until I'm really, really sure that, you know, exact is worth taking the chance on or the risk. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That makes sense because I've actually seen uh, quite a bit uptick in my exact keywords that I have set up. The prices on those just keep going up. So I yes. decrease my bid, yes. get my ACoS back down to where it makes sense. Right. So you got to understand the, uh, the platform is designed to make you spend money as well, right? That's, they make billions on, on ads, right? Amazon is the one making all the money, not us, really. I mean, you are, we are, but, you know, not as much, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's not as bad as Facebook ads where it's like, that's like a, a black hole. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, it, it just eats up your money. Amazon is getting there slowly. So it is costing more, but... It's, it gives you the data, which is, you know, priceless. You got to pay for understanding what the customer is actually searching for. Yep. If you know that, then it's gold right there, right? So, uh, yeah, but you got to pay for the data. Do your research and then, like I said, 
make sure that you know for sure you're absolutely you can't be 100 percent, but you're like you have really real confidence before you go into the uh the exact match campaigns okay all right that makes sense for the wholesale world but right? private sellers yeah private label i would yeah i would definitely test them sure i have but with margins that tight that you guys have you know so you got to be careful i would say yep. so go phrase uh, most of the ones that I have exact campaigns on are ones that I have exclusive agreements for. So my okay. margins are usually a little higher on those. Okay. And so I'm treating them a little bit more like a private label product. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. makes sense. Perfect. So now we've got the <laughs> levels of different campaigns. We're to the broad. Uh, right. What are we looking for in that campaign? So broad, you want to have, you want to, you don't want to have too many keywords. Once you create a campaign, I like limiting it to no more than 30 per campaign. So, so this isn't an auto campaign anymore, right? So this is now a broad. broad. We're in broad. So now, right. So now you're selecting from the, the report, right? You're selecting whatever is converting well for you, the search terms. You're creating broad campaigns. And you want to create a broad campaign with no more than 30 keywords in it. 30 okay. would be like my max. I won't go over 30. I would go actually lower, the lower, the better. I mean, the less, the fewer, the better, right? It gives you more control, more understanding of what might be working or not. So, and it's not gonna eat up all your budget at once. I mean, one keyword could eat up all the budget and then, then you gotta break it up and then create other campaigns. Limiting, limiting the amount of keywords you have limits that possibility pretty much. So you wanna make sure you don't have too many keywords. So let's assume, let's go in the, mid, in the mid, mid of this 20 keywords, for example. You would select your 20 top performing keywords, you create broad campaigns, and the same process, you gotta check the data, right? Make sure that you're removing stuff or gauging what's working and increasing budget, lowering the bid. I mean, you gotta have, I guess, analysis going on here. You gotta basically look at it manually, right? The software initially, I, I like doing this manually initially and then let the software take over. After I'm like understanding what the bidding and all what the echo should be, then I could set up like uh, triggers for that, right? So once you're done with the broad, of course, you got to give it time. You, again, you're paying for the data and it's going to come to a point where you have, you know, search terms showing up that are converting. So then you go to the next stage, right? Which is like, you take the phrase and you create like top phrase campaigns. Like I said, for you guys, I would not recommend like exact match campaigns. So if you see something converting, like out of the 20, you see like one or two doing really well. I would pause the rest, move them to another campaign and keep that one. Don't pause the one that's working. Right. Okay. Let it, let it go. Let it go. Let it, let it do its, its thing. And you still, you're still going to see the air cost improving because you're going to remove the, the other guys that are dragging it down. Okay. You create a separate campaign where you could add more. You could use the other campaign as a, like a research campaign. Okay, interesting. So we're not moving the ones that are doing good. We're leaving those in that campaign and moving the ones that are doing bad. Yes, that's, uh, that's the opposite, I think, most people would think. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's move less than move more, right? So. Yes, of course. Right. I've made the mistake of like trying to move it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it won't work. It would just not convert. It would just not get impressions at all. Because hmm. yeah. internally, a campaign has uh, an internal Amazon uh, yeah. ranking, if you will, right? Amazon favors season campaigns. So if you're starting a brand new one, you, it's, it might not give you the same weight as the other guy, as the season yeah. one. Yeah, that makes you sense. Be, yeah, you want to be careful with not touching stuff that are already working. <laughs> that would move the other stuff for sure. Okay. That's absolutely for sure. All right, perfect. So we're moving the ones that are not working, basically meaning you know, working as well, or they're not converting as good as we want as them well. to. Putting them in a different campaign and leaving the ones in there that are doing really well. For us. Yeah, I would change it to like uh, I would uh, even even changing the title of the campaign to a top phrase campaign, meaning like this guy has been tested, and this is really working for me. So it, it is a top phrase campaign at this point. Okay. Right. It's like a mature campaign. Don't touch it. Don't add anything to it. If it's working, give it budget for sure. Budget. If it's working, give it budget. Um, gradually. You don't want to double the budget immediately, right? 
So it's a gradual process, pretty much. All of this, nothing happens overnight, right? Yeah, yeah. We're talking about like weeks in between each step. I would say before you get to that point of a, a top phrase campaign, yeah, I would say a month, a month to a month and a half. Yeah, that's the t- that's the time you would get like under to understand what's working, what keywords are working for what product. I think you should have a good idea like in a month and a half or so. Yeah, so don't be making a broad campaign like you run it for one day and you're like, hey, I got a conversion there, let's move it. Well, I can talk, I, I can tell you from experience, I've done that many, many times when I started out, that doesn't work, so don't do it. It's like, it's gonna cost you a lot of money and you know, you're gonna, yeah, give it time. It's, you might have got lucky or something, you never know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was gonna buy that product anyways. Yeah, exactly. It is a it is a data collection. I, I guess you gotta collect the data, pay for it, be patient, and then just act upon uh, whatever it tells you. Yep. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's that. That would be my strategy for you guys if you have twenty uh, percent and above break even a cost, right? So if you're doing a twenty percent above uh, margin, then you could try that strategy. If you're doing under that, then that's a different problem, right? <laughs> if you're getting like 20% margin, then in my opinion, you still got to pay for the data, right? And it's just a matter of waiting longer for the data, right? So I, I, would, I would suggest starting out with just one automatic campaign, like I said before, not the catch all since, you know, it, I would have the one campaign per ace, uh, per one campaign per product, right? Okay. And wait longer. Because you're still gonna have to have the data to move through the, the process, um, and you could you could immediately try out phrase campaigns if you want. Skip the broad, skip the research if you want. But you know, at the end of the day, you need the data to tell you what to do. So, yep, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I definitely like it, uh, and something I think I'm gonna try. Uh, are we moving though? So once we have the broad and we find those one keywords that are doing converting well in the broad and moving the bad ones to a different campaign and playing with them there, are we ever, when do, at what point do we want to move those broads to a phrase or do we never want to move that? I mean, the the concept behind this is, is testing. So the ones that you're moving out, you're still not sure if they're working or not. So you're going to, you need additional testing. So yep. over time, you might, you know, remove some keywords that are not working, and then eventually you're gonna have other ones. You're gonna keep adding to those as well. That's a campaign you're gonna be adding new keywords to, right? Okay. It's not gonna be a static campaign for sure. So look at it as like a research campaign, right? So you keep looking. You keep let, let's say Ignite is suggesting keywords. You could throw them in there as phrase matches, right? And then test them out. Let them prove themselves. Once they do, then Again, same idea. You keep the ones that are working, you move the other ones, not a campaign. So the other one becomes a research campaign. Okay. You see how that goes? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, don't touch whatever is working, <laughs> in <yeah>. other words. <laughs> now, yeah. one thing I just thought of, when in the auto campaign, the ones that we move to that broad, eventually, are we negativing or making those a negative in the auto campaigns? You know. It, the way I structure campaigns is I control the bid for sure, right? So I want to make sure that my phrase is always outbidding my auto. So yeah, you could negative it there, but it's not doesn't really matter because if the bid is higher, then it is going the impressions are going to move with it. Um, okay. But to make sure you could negative exactly, sure you could do that or pause it, yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, before I reached out to you, I think, yeah, this has been running. I started it on the 21st. Well, I guess it was after I reached out to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually started, surprisingly, what you recommended in your first step where I put all the products into an auto campaign. And what uh, you get? A five cent one I did, not 10 cents. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, I've spent $45.28. I got 54 orders for $1,805.49 for the 2.51% acre. So pretty good so far. I'm, I'm, yeah, sure. Worth a try, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
You think I should probably increase that up to 10 cents? What's your, no, don't mess with the budget. I mean, the bid. I would, what's your budget right now? Uh, the budget I have at $100. And you, how, well, have you tested how, how much you're spending per day, roughly? Not much. I mean, it's only yeah. 40 I would give it more budget first. You could increase the bid, but you might be interfering with the other manual campaigns that you have running, which I don't know. Okay. So I would give it a little bit more budget, see how it does. Yeah, I would not necessarily mess with the bid that much. It's doing great, right? So yeah, for sure. I guess I probably don't want to mess with it. I could maybe nah. talk about making another campaign for at the ten cents and see. Yeah, I mean you gotta think of those campaigns as, you know, like just set it and, and forget about it pretty much. It's not something you wanna optimize or anything like that. It's not an optimization campaign, right? You're not really doing anything research wise with, with it. You're just making, oh, I gotta give it like uh, everything in there and then let it do its thing. So you're not gonna get data out of it. So what's the point of increasing the bid and removing keywords and stuff like that? Yep. You have the auto campaigns for that. The other ones, right, for that. So, but I would, would I want to at some point prune any products that are in there that are not do, having? Yeah, products? sure. If they're costing you money and not getting you results, yeah, sure. But make sure that you're sure that if you, you get, you're giving it enough time and, and impressions and clicks. Yeah, sure, I would do that. Why not? Okay, perfect. But are, are, there, are there some of them that got nothing? That's kind of rare. You, you should get something out of them. I mean... I've sent bids, it's, it's not gonna cost you much. Yeah, I mean, there's some products that haven't got a sale yet, but have had clicks. What's uh, the spent? There's probably some, it looks like a lot of them have clicks now. Right, but how many clicks? So how many, is, at, at five cents, you could afford quite a few clicks, right? Yeah, like this one has 39 clicks. It's spent a dollar forty four cents per click. It and how much is the product? Yet. Um, no. Product, I think that one is eighty bucks. Eighty bucks, yeah. man! I would, I would let that go, my friend. <laughs> let oh, it I'm run. Not, yeah, definitely not. No, let touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah. I mean, you're way off your break even there. I mean, I would let it run. I would, I would forget about. Like I said, set it and forget it, pretty much. So I'm yeah. just looking in here. So this one is interesting. One of the products it has thirty one clicks. Spent a dollar forty three. Had a couple sales, um, a cost of one point seven nine, but the status says pending review. Pending review. Yeah. Status status of the campaign. Yeah, the status of the campaign changed. I mean, some of them say not in buy box, and some of them say delayed. Right. This one I've never seen it say pending no. review before. Make sure that uh, reviewing the ad the listing. Thinks there's something wrong. Maybe I'm getting too good of an A cost. <laughs> Hey, yeah, make sure that the listing is okay. You're getting the buy box. I mean, you should. That's kind of, I've never heard of that one before. Oh, no, it's just currently unavailable. I wonder if they, oh, okay. that yeah. That's matter right. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably, you don't have the buy box, I guess. Yeah. So I bet you, because it is like a, uh, like a fishing bait kind of thing. So I bet mm -hmm. you think that maybe it's a hazmat product or something mm. they probably you got, it. You got flagged all the time it's so annoying that i send stuff in and then amazon's like oh this could be hazard nope. like, no not even a little bit but uh yeah okay. so what do you do you call you call them you give them a you, uh, you i guess you initiate a, a i guess a ticket is that what you do yeah yeah usually i'll have an email i'll have to search for an email and they'll say whatever they think the problem is and then you have to rectify it, either provide like an SDS or an exemption sheet or an invoice if that's what they're looking for or something like that. It's like a daily occurrence in wholesale as you grow. So. Yeah, if you have 300 products and keep adding to it, then yeah, that's, yeah. that's I guess that's uh, part of the business, part of the job. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. sometimes you run into where different a brand maybe will decide that you know, we don't want anybody selling our stuff on Amazon anymore. So what they do illegally in my mind is uh, issue a uh, IP complaint, like an intellectual property mm -hmm. complaint, mm -hmm. or that you're selling fraudulent goods or something like that. And so then Amazon just takes their word for it and shuts you down. And then you got to prove otherwise. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the jungle, <laughs> right? Pretty much. I mean, that's uh yeah, 
Um, are you planning on having your own website at some point or are you just staying on Amazon? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, you know, I sell a little bit on eBay. Uh, one of my products that I have exclusive for, I run their WooCommerce store as well. Um, so I want to do more of that as we grow and then, you know, more Walmart maybe at some point. Mm. Uh, it all depends, right? Because Amazon's like the big beast. So I'm getting like 120,000 in sales a month on Amazon and eBay might be a couple, WooCommerce might be a few. So, you know, where do you put all your work, right? No, oh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, definitely want to expand. You know, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. All the time. You got to stay focused, but spend maybe like 10, 15% on something else. Agree for sure. But not all your eggs in one basket. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but you know, Amazon is still the place to be. So yeah, it's, uh, um, so I think we went over everything, right? Um, yeah, I think we walked through the campaign. This is probably definitely one that people are going to want to listen to two, three, four times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a lot of information for sure. Yeah. I definitely understand most of what you're talking about because I've been in private label. I've done all of this. There's a lot of people that probably have very little clue. So it, at a minimum, I think it sounds like we should be making that auto campaign for 10 cents and adding all of our products in there and just letting that run and seeing how the A cost plays out. A hundred percent. Definitely, definitely recommended. Yeah, definitely. You have nothing to lose on that for sure. For sure. Yeah. And then just keep learning more about advertising and either do it yourself or at what point do you think it would make sense for someone to pay you to do it for them? When it becomes a hassle, once, you, once it becomes like a, a problem in your business, taking, off, taking up too much of your time and you don't have, you don't want to learn more about it because you are going to get to that point. If you, <laughs> let's assume you have like 50 campaigns running and you're like, oh my God, where do I go from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you have... I guess the, the, the revenue for sure. And you want to scale for sure. That's why you want to hire someone like me. Sure. To help you out. Okay. So do you charge like hourly or by campaign or how does your pricing work for that? My pricing is based on the size of your catalog, right? So we just, I gotta go, you know, I usually set up an initial uh, phone call with the potential customers where we go over the, 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 the different informations. I guess, parts that I need on their business. And then from there, we, we come up to an agreement to what would make sense for the both of us. So there's no fit. I don't charge by hour or so. No, I charge by uh, business pretty much, by catalog size and by how much volume that you're doing pretty much. Okay. All right. So you, you think there's probably space in there for wholesale people to reach out to you and have us have you do our advertising and it would be profitable for us even paying you to do that? Sure. I mean, if you if you've never run ads before, if you you're missing out on a lot of potential, I mean, you could be scaling at a higher rate here. So if you never if you've never done it before, it's definitely worth looking into. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think it's a foreign concept a little bit to anyone who is just in wholesale and has never been in private label because um, you don't do that really in retail arbitrage at all. So mm -hmm. private label is kind of the space for advertising on Amazon, at least the way people think about it. But I think there's a lot of opportunity in wholesale that, you know, just from a five cent auto campaign, I mean, I made $1,800. Yeah. Well, think of it. If you are 300 products, let's say you knew exactly what the customers were typing to find your 300 products. Imagine how valuable that is to you. And imagine if you could set up campaigns specifically targeting those keywords. That's what the data would give you pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a win-win, I think. But you just got to pay for the data and see. I'm not going to tell you it's like 100% guaranteed, but yeah, it's definitely worth looking into. Okay. So if, if people are interested in reaching out to you and finding out more, how would they go about doing that? You could uh, contact me by email, ben at ppcmaestro.com, or you could look me up on, on I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, uh, not on Instagram yet, but I, I plan, I'm planning on. So yeah, Facebook, email, like I said, ben, B-E-N at ppcmaestro.com.
Okay. Or ben you know, at ppcmaestro.com. .com, yeah. Or Facebook. I'm there. Just Bernard Nader. You'll find me. Okay. Yep. And that's your website as well, ppcmaestro.com. I'm looking at it over here. You got about yeah. a section and some information about what you do. Um, oh, you got a free keyword research ebook as well. Yeah. Right. You could download that as well. If you get on my, but you do get on my email list. Right. That's the, sure. yeah. Nothing wrong with mm-hmm. I do the same for my. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just. Uh, um, all right. Yeah. Cool. So would that ebook be something good for wholesale people to look over? I would say I have another one. Okay. Do the, I have another ebook that's not on my website. I think it would be more beneficial to you guys. It's a, a keyword research ebook actually gives you like free tools that you could look into to, to perform your initial keywords. So you could find that at, at ppcmaestro.com forward slash ebook. Forward slash ebook? Okay. Forward slash ebook, yeah. So that, that one is going to give you a, a few of the free and paid keyword research tools that I like using. It'll give you, it'll give you an idea on what, what to look for and how to basically start understanding all that stuff. So okay. it's a good starting point. Sure. I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes as well. So people mm-hmm. can click on over there, but yeah, yeah. maestro.com forward slash ebook. It took me right to a nice splash page here where mm-hmm. I can enter my info and mm-hmm. bring up the guide. So if yeah. I enter my info right here and get my free guide, it's on the way, huh? There you go. Right. Yeah. I mean, the other one I have is for listing optimization. So some of you guys might have access to that. So it, I don't, you, can you touch the listing on, when you have a, a wholesale account? Yes. Uh, so, uh, Sometimes. Not all the time. So mm-hmm. my account is pretty seasoned, uh, and I think that plays a role into it. A lot of times I can make updates and they'll go live, um, especially if it's a slower selling product that I'm trying to optimize to get more sales to. Um, if it's something that's selling really well, then most likely someone else has the control mm-hmm. of that. But right. Uh, so then at that point, what I need to do is upload my changes. If they don't take, then I will open up a ticket with Amazon and work with them. And so they'll ask for like pictures of the product, including the UPC barcode, a link to the manufacturer's page and stuff like that. And if everything adds up, then they'll make the change for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just makes the process longer for sure. But yeah, it's doable. Yeah, so you could, if you're brand registered, then you know there's nothing. What yeah. they basically do is like, okay, we sent the changes over to the re- brand registered person, um, but they're in no obligation to make the changes. So, ah, yeah, sure. I mean, there's you know there's so much more we could touch on. Um, let's say if you do have access to the listing itself, mm-hmm. conversion rate is extremely important for once you, once you have once you're gonna run PPC. Yep. So you want to make sure your listing is PPC ready, meaning it is optimized. If you have the option to, of doing so, for sure, you gotta, you gotta do. You, you definitely want to do that before you start. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm actually doing a lot of that. I actually hired a virtual assistant who is just uh, writing copy for listings for me because mm-hmm. I've really gotten into finding listings that have like a good reviews. Um, maybe they have 10 reviews, 20 reviews, 30 reviews, but it's like four and a half stars, five stars. And the listing is not selling well, but it's selling, you know, maybe five, 10, 20 a month. And maybe there's not even an FBA seller, just FBM. And so those are the ones that I really love because then I optimize the listing. I become the first FBA person, maybe run some ads. And yeah, get that listing going and have it all awesome. for a while. That's that's the that's an awesome opportunity for sure. If you find them, yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's and a gold mine right there. Because I, a lot of the products I sell are in a hobby that I love doing, and so it feels good to be helping out these products that I know should be selling better. Yeah, um, yeah. Them. If it's something you enjoy, even better, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. All right, Bernard, anything else we need to touch on in the PPC world before we wrap up here? There's a lot we could touch on there, Todd, but, you know, since it's, yeah, it's, if anyone has any question, just, you know, don't uh, reach out and let me know. I'll, I'll gladly help. Um, yeah, I mean, we could do another one if you want on, on so many different things, product re- uh, keyword research, we could do on listing optimization, you name it. We could do several different stuff, so... 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a really good idea to do another one of these and go even more in depth. Um, once people watch this, they'll probably want to know more. Maybe we could even do a webinar or something at some point. Yeah. That sure. way we can visually show people what's oh, yeah. going on. Uh, but we'll see where this leads. But yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you coming on. I learned a lot, you know, even though I already know quite a bit about advertising, I'm not an expert. So really appreciate it. I think this is going to be probably one of our new top episodes. I have a feeling out there. So I had a good time. Thanks a lot, Todd. Yeah, I did appreciate it. So yeah, hopefully we can do this again soon. Awesome. Appreciate it, Bernard. You have an awesome day. You too. Thank you, Todd. All right, so what did I tell you? That was an awesome episode. I'm gonna be listening to that again myself once I publish this. It was great content. I'm gonna start putting some of that right into action now, as I already said in there. I've got the auto campaign with all of my products going. It's going fantastic for me. So I am gonna take the step and start breaking out my products into those individual auto campaigns that he recommends, moving them to the broad and the phrase. And I think it's gonna pay off really well. Only time will tell. We'll see how that goes, but it was really good. Uh, and definitely do more research on this. And if you want Bernard's help, you know, if your wholesale company is growing and you're doing well, it pays sometimes to have someone help you with this stuff rather than trying to learn it all yourself. It's good to know the basics of everything that your business does, but taking advantage of an expert can really be helpful. So definitely check out ppcmaestro.com if you want more help on that. And then grab that ebook, of course, as well, ppcmaestro.com forward slash ebook. You can also get all the links and the show notes and the transcripts at entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 30. Make sure you subscribe and like this if you're listening on YouTube and if you're on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave us a review over there. Let me know what you think of our show and share this. This is definitely an episode that needs to be shared out there so more people can hear it. So we'd really appreciate that. So with that, this is Todd Welch with Entrepreneur Adventure signing off. Happy selling, everybody. This has been another episode of the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow entrepreneur. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.